is a tutorial about how to create a DOI in Fabrica using the form. I'm using the test environment. You need to log in using your repository credentials. This is really important if you want to create and manage DOIs. Once you log in, you will see the dashboard. Navigate to the DOIs tab. On the left hand side, you have the option to create form. Here we have the form and at the top are the required properties. The first field is the DOI field. You'll see the prefix and then the suffix. This is a randomly generated suffix. This is the recommended option, but you may edit that field. The next field is the state. There are three states, draft, registered and findable. Draft DOIs can be deleted, registered and findable DOIs have been registered in the global handle server, which means they cannot be deleted. In this case, we're going to create a draft DOI. Next, we have the URL. This is the URL that points to the landing page where your DOI will resolve to. The next field is the creative field. This is the field where you include the main researchers or organisations involved in producing the resource. You can manually add the name, given name and family name of the authors or the organisation. In this case, I'm going to add an ORCID ID and the given name and family name are automatically populated. You can add an affiliation to the creator. This uses the raw registry and automatically includes the raw ID. The next field is the title. Here you can include the title of the resource. And if this is not the main title, you may also select the title type from the drop down list. You can select the language of the title and then we scroll down the publisher to the publisher field where you can include the name of the organization that publishes the data set. Next is the year and finally the last required field is the resource type general. You can also add the resource type description if you wish to add more information about the resource that you're sharing. Okay, so that's all of the required fields added to our DOI metadata. The next uh, section is the recommended properties. And the first field we have here is the subjects. Uh, now, we use the subject scheme from the OECD fields of science and technology and you can select from the drop down list. If you wish to use another subject scheme that's also possible you can type in a keyword here but this is the recommended option. In this case I'm going to select biological sciences and you can see that the subject scheme and the subject URI have been automatically populated. You can add another subject if required. The next field is the contributors field. Here you can add an institutional person uh, responsible for collecting, uh, distributing or otherwise contributing to the resource that you're sharing. In this case you can select for example a hosting institution and in this if you wish to you can also add the name identifier. It could be for example raw ID. Uh, in this case I'm just going to type the name of the organisation and you can of course select the affiliation if you wish to do so. As we go down we come to the dates field. It's important to get the date format right and you'll find all of the accepted formats in the documentation for the form. In this case I'm just using a simple format. I can include the date type, for example, when the resource was submitted. And it's also possible to add date information. For example, in this case, I'm adding BCE instead of BC. The next field, and very important for data citation, is the related identifiers field. In this field, you can add 
a link to an identifier. In this case, it's the publication where this data set was cited. As you can see, the, fee the form has automatically detected that this is a DOI. And this is the publication where the data set we're sharing was cited. So we need to add the relation type. In this case, we know that our DOI is cited by this DOI of a publication. And we can also add the type of uh, resource that the DOI here refers to. In this case, it's a publication, so it's text. You can add other rel related identifiers. Next up is the description field. Add a description of the resource that you're sharing. And automatically, it will come up as the description type abstract. You may also wish to choose one of the other options from the description type. And again, you can choose the language of the description. Geolocations is for indicating the spatial region or place where the data was gathered. So in this example, the place where the data was gathered is the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, and then we move down to the geolocation point. So the longitude of the data spatial region and the latitude of the spatial region. These are the two pieces of information you need to add here. And the last field in the geolocation section is the geolocation box. So here you need to add a westbound longitude, an eastbound longitude. You need to add a southbound latitude, like so, and a northbound latitude. Okay, good. So this uh, indicates the spatial limits of a box for uh, the region where our data set was collected. Scrolling down, we come to the final section of the form. These are the optional properties. The first thing we can add here is the language. And then we have the alternate identifiers field. So if there is another persistent identifier or identifier that indicates this same resource, you can add it here. In this case, it's an arc and I can add the arc, the ID here, and then I can choose from the drop down the alternate identifier type. The next field is the rights fields and you can select from a standard list of licenses provided by the SPDX registry. I'm going to choose Academic Free License version 1.1 and here the rights URI is automatically populated. The next field is the size. This is an optional field to indicate the size of the resource that you're sharing. Next we have the formats. In this case we can indicate the format of the resource being shared. We can indicate the version and the last and final field is the funding references field. We can choose the funding funder name from the drop down list and it will be automatically populated from the Crossref funder registry. And we have here the DOI that indicates this funder. You can also add, if you wish, the award number of the grant behind the award, uh, the resource that you're sharing, uh, the title of the grant or award, and finally the award URI. You need to fill this in manually, this is not auto-populated. 
And there we go, we have uh, all of the fields for our DOI metadata filled in. So I can click Create DOI. And there we go, we have one draft DOI with the rich metadata. The last thing to do is to set the DOI to findable. So I just click Update. And then I change the state to findable, which means it's a publicly available DOI. And the metadata can be searched and retrieved. Click Update. And there we go. That's how to create a DOI using the form.